Good evening, everybody. My name is Melissa Quesada, and I will be your moderator for today's Farm Laborers Wage Board meeting. Before we begin, I have some important ground rules to share. Please ensure that your screen is set to speaker view by clicking on the view box located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You've been muted upon entry and will remain muted throughout today's meeting. There will be no public testimony during today's meeting. The members of the wage board are unmuted so they can speak at any time. Any distracting video will be disabled. We're conducting simultaneous interpretation during the meeting. So in order to hear interpreters in today's meeting, you must select your language preference. Click on interpretation in the meeting option and select English or Spanish. If you do not select a language preference, you will hear both English and Spanish. Again, click on interpretation in the meeting options and select English or Spanish. Para nuestros hispanos parlantes, estamos utilizando interpretación simultánea durante la reunión. Para escuchar a los intérpretes, tienes que seleccionar su idioma preferida. Presiona el botón que dice Interpretation y luego selecciona Inglés o Español. Si no selecciona un idioma preferido, escuchará ambos Inglés y Español. American Sign Language Interpretation is also available and will be displayed on screen during the meeting. Today's meeting is an open public meeting and is being recorded. The recordings will be available on the Department of Labor's website and that website is on.ny.gov slash wage board. You can find more details on the work of the wage board on that website, including a copy of the wage board's report and recommendations that will be discussed at today's meeting. We will be posting a Spanish version of the wage board report as soon as it becomes available. As a reminder to the board members, during today's meeting, please speak slowly to allow time for our interpreters to translate what is being said. And at this time, I'm pleased to welcome and introduce the Wage Board Chair, Brenda McDuffie, who will now start the meeting. Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Melissa, for being our moderator today. And good afternoon to everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Farm Laborers Wage Board meeting. My name, as you heard, is Brenda McDuffie, and I am grateful to Commissioner Reardon for giving me the opportunity to serve as the chair of the wage board. I'd like to remind you that today's meeting, as was stated, is exclusively for the board members to conduct business, and it is not a public hearing. Let me please introduce my fellow board members who I've had the pleasure to work with during these deliberations. New York Farm, Bu New York Farm Bureau President, Mr. David Fisher. David, will you wave? Thank you, Dave. And former New York State AFL-CIO President, Mr. Dennis Hughes. Hey, Dennis. I'd like to also not acknowledge our support from the staff of the Department of Labor who have joined us today. They have been incredibly helpful throughout the process and have answered questions, provided research, gone back and made more information available and really have done whatever was necessary to make sure this board had everything it needed to move ahead in its deliberations. So at this time, I'd like to quickly recap why we're here today. Our work as a wage board began after the Farm Laborers Fair Practice Act of 2019 was created, uh, created a new labor protection for farm laborers, including overtime pay for any work performed in excess of 60 hours per week. The act required Commissioner Reardon to convene this board to further consider the appropriate overtime threshold for farm workers. The Farm Laborers Wage Board hosted its first public meeting on February 28, 
2020 in Albany, New York. We held four public hearings and four meetings virtually in 2020 due to the pandemic. In 2022, the board hosted four additional public hearings virtually where testimony was heard from farm workers, agricultural employers, academic experts, elected officials, among many, many other. My fellow board members have done a tremendous job representing the interests of their constituents from organized labor and farm owners and operators. What has become clear throughout these proceedings is that action is needed. It is our duty to protect tens of thousands of farm workers and align their rights with those in other industries. We also have a duty to protect the farmers and farmers who are a significant part of our state's economy and responsible for feeding New Yorkers and beyond. At the end of our last wage board hearing in January 2022, we adopted three resolutions regarding overtime for farm laborers in New York State. These resolutions recommended reducing the overtime threshold for farm laborers from 60 to 40 hours a week over a 10 year period with reductions of four hour increments on, on an annual biannual basis beginning January 1st, 2024. Today, September 6, 2022, we will fulfill our statutory charge laid out in Labor Law Section 674A by voting to approve and submit our official report and recommendations to Commissioner Reardon, Governor Kathy Hochul, and the legislature. Our report is posted online on the Department of Labor's Farm Laborers Board website. Our work as a board concludes upon submitting our report. Once this report is advanced to Commissioner Reardon, uh, is report is excuse me is advanced. Commissioner Reardon will follow the process in Labor Law. 656, which requires her to review the report and recommendations and issue an order accepting or rejecting the board's report and recommendations within 45 days. The commissioner must then publish a notice in at least 10 newspapers any objections can be sent to the commissioner within 15 days. Of the publication notice. Instructions on how to submit objections will be included in the notice. If the commissioner accepts our recommendations to lower the overtime threshold, she will then instruct her staff to issue regulations to amend the overtime rules in the law. After much deliberation and input from stakeholders across New York State, as well as testimony and information we receive from others in other states, our final report concluded that the overtime threshold should be lowered to 40 hours over a 10 year span with reductions of four hours on a biannual basis. 
We believe that this decision protects the right of farm laborers while taking in account the needs of farmers. The following phase in schedule is included in our report. On January 1st, 2024, the threshold will be lowered to 56 hours. On January 1st, 2026, the threshold will be lowered to 52 hours. On January 1st, 2028, the threshold will be lowered to 48 hours. On January 1st, 2030, the threshold will be lowered to 44 hours. And on January 1st, 2032, the threshold will be lowered to 40 hours. Now, I will make a motion to move our work forward. I move that this board adopt and submit our report and recommendations to Commissioner Reardon, Governor Kathy Hochul, and the New York State Legislature. That is the motion I'm putting before the board. Do I have a second? Second. I recognize a second from Mr. Hughes. Now that we have a second, is there discussion from my fellow board members? Brenda, I, I would like to make a few comments. Please, um, Mr. Fisher. I, I was hopeful when I was appointed that this wage board, uh, what we would learn would be taken to heart in the final outcome. Um, I sincerely appreciate the courtesy and attention of Brenda and Dennis have shown during the more than two year process we've been here. Um, it's been an awkward process. Uh, the three of us couldn't sit in the same room together or have meaningful discussions uh, or visit a farm or do other things that would have been helpful. That being said, I didn't come into the process with blinders on. Uh, I knew cards were stacked uh, against the position of my organization and what agriculture truly believes is best for farms, farm workers, and the food supply. In the end, I believe the report, which was written by the Department of Labor, does not reflect the data, research, and scope of the full testimony that was provided. I offered up a number of suggestions, many of which were not taken into consideration. I'll briefly highlight some of the major concerns I have with the report. For starters, it makes a number of conclusions that are based on nothing more than opinion, not facts, and puts weight behind derogatory charges about the industry. Even though the report says there was no findings of racial injustice on farms, New York State has strict regulations in place to ensure the health and safety of workers in every industry, including farms. And we work with and rely on those state and local agencies to ensure anyone violating these rules are held accountable across all business sectors. The report further asserts with no supporting evidence that a large number of farm employees are paid off the books. This claim is patently untrue. And even if it was true, this is a DOL failure to enforce their own regulations. Until DOL can prove their assertions or that farm employers engage in this unlawful practice in a more pervasive way than other industries, the language should be taken out of the report. The report calls out what it says are significantly lower wages for farm employees versus those in the private industry. The report says that wages are nearly 40,000 a year for farm workers, but nowhere does it take into account that seasonal workers earn their money in a short period of four to eight months or the multitude of unique benefits provided on top of wages like free housing, utilities, food from the farm, and transportation that are often not provided to many other workers. Also refers to similarly situated industries that have overtime, but does not include any of the testimony that outlines how those are not fair comparisons and how different industries truly are. The report includes testimony from proponents 
of a lower threshold on how a 40 hour threshold has not had negative impact in California, but no, makes no mention of the testimony that the 40 hour threshold just kicked in in the final stages this year and that no data was presented in the January hearings to support such a claim that it's not hurting agriculture there. And that came with a lack of information directly from DOL staff. In highlighting the testimony from economist Griff Wolf at Cornell, the report conveniently leaves out the employee survey that showed 72% of farm workers said they'd leave the state if their hours were cut. It's also completely discounts the voice of farmers simply because the majority wants to stay at 60. It barely touches on the testimony of how this will make farms less competitive and how labor shortages are already a challenge and only get worse if workers leave the state. The facts can't be ignored even if the report doesn't give them their due diligence. What may be most disheartening is the references of historical racist policies to justifying lower threshold. The report cited no evidence or testimony of racial discrimination on farms, but highlights Ms. Dixon's testimony that says, history is connected to New York State's present day denial of labor protection to its largely Latinx farm worker population. When in fact, farm workers in New York State have some of the strongest, if not the strongest set of protections in the country. We're here today because of major overhaul of the farm worker regulations in the state, some of which the farm community advocated for, including the 60 hour overtime threshold that was a compromise that all sides supported just three years ago. New York is a leader in farm worker protections. Some farm labor protections are even stronger than those for the rest of the private sector, including mandatory day arrest, overtime if an employee works a seventh day, regardless of total hours worked, and using a card check system to join union versus a private vote. The report and the Department of Labor have failed to recognize all the work agricultural industry has done and been doing to improve working conditions on our farms. We championed an ag workforce development specialist through Cornell Cooperative Extension, have made major investments in safety training and equipment, human resource development, higher wage rates, new housing construction, and it does not take into account that collective bargaining allows for workers and employers to bargain in good faith for additional benefits and workplace conditions. This report paints a picture of farm worker, worker protections that is really not grounded in the truth. Finally, the report makes the conclusion that a significant number of farm workers did not testify because of fear or retaliation or because they're low wage or often undocumented. It doesn't mention most of the hearings were scheduled when seasonal workers were out of the country or unavailable. While it refers to letters written by farm workers, it clearly discounts their merits versus those who presented in person. Every farm worker's voice should be heard. Every bit of testimony should be weighed. It also fails to mention the wage board did not see all the videos that were submitted. So DOL in this report should not make charges of lack of participation when all the testimony was referenced or, or even considered. It's not all referenced. For these reasons, at this time, I can't support this final report as written. And if the report is forwarded, I would respectfully request that my comments be added as an addendum to the report. No matter the outcome of today or in the coming weeks, one thing we can all agree on is how valuable our employees are to, to the work of feeding our fellow New Yorkers. Farmers can't do it without them, and we will continue to stand with them and do the best we can to provide our employees with good jobs and opportunities. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. And I want to state, um, as you know, this meeting is being recorded and all comments made by any board member, all of you are part of the public record. And so your 
comments will be uh, part of the record um, as part of our proceedings for today. So thank you so very much. Any other comments? I would like to call the question, Madam Chairman. Okay. I will now then, if you know other comments, uh, take a vote from each board member and I'll start with myself. I vote in favor of submitting the report as written. Mr. Hughes? I vote in favor of the report as written. Thank you. Mr. Fisher? I oppose the report as written. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Now with that vote being taken, we have a majority of members of this board that have approved the submittal of our official report and members of this board approve uh, the recommendations included in the report. I will ask each board member uh, because we're meeting virtually to sign the last page of the report and return a copy of that page to the Department of Labor staff. I will also request Commissioner Reardon and her staff send a copy of the report to the governor and the legislature on our behalf. This concludes today's Farm Wage Board meeting and the work of the Wage Board. I'd like to remind you that all materials related to today's meeting will be posted on the Department of Labor's website. I am very, very grateful to Dennis, David, and their teams, the Department of Labor team, the Agricultural and Market team for their support during this process. As was stated, this was a very difficult and challenging process that was uh, impacted by COVID and took much longer than expected. But I believe that we heard from everyone who wanted to give testimony, not only during our virtual meetings, but in person and in writing. I'd like to also really thank all of you, all the members of the public who have shared information, who are committed and passionate and knowledgeable about this very important issue and made sure we had your voice being heard. I'd like to also extend a deep sense of gratitude on behalf of the entire board for every person who participated in our 10 public meetings, hearings, submitted testimony, engaged in any way throughout the process. We really appreciate all that you have done to help us get through this deliberation and get to the point where we are now able to submit this report on behalf of the board. I hope everyone remains safe and healthy. And I thank you all again very, very much for everything that you have done. Brenda, could I make a motion that my comments be added as a minority opinion at the end of the report? Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. I have no objection to that. Um, so it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you, Dennis, opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, it will be submitted as um, you requested. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And again, I really appreciate all the sacrifice that everyone involved, um, especially you two gentlemen and members of the department uh, staff team who supported us throughout the process. Take care and that concludes our meeting. Motion for adjournment. Second. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.